on the topic of uh, like discovery of evidence of alien civilizations, which is something you touch on in your book, what that idea would do to societies, to the human psyche and in general. Do, do you think, and you talk about the, uh, I still have trouble pronouncing, but oh, um, more. a more and more wager, mm -hmm. right? What What do you think is, uh, can you explain it? And what do you think in general is the effect that such knowledge might have on human civilization? Right, so uh, Pascal had this wager about God. And by the way, there are interesting connections between theology and the search for extraterrestrial life. You know, it's possible that, you know, we were planted on this planet by another civilization. That, yes. Uh, you know, we attribute to God powers that are that belong really to a technological civilization. Uh, but putting that aside, uh, Pascal basically said, you know, let's, there are two possibilities, either God exists or not, right? Mm -hmm. And if God exists, you know, the consequences are quite significant and therefore, you know, we should we should consider that possibility differently than equal weight to both possibilities. Yes. And uh, uh, I suggest that we do the same with Oumuamua or other technological signatures that we uh, keep in mind the consequences <laughs> and therefore pay more attention to that possibility. Now, some people say, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. My point is that the term extraordinary is really subjective. You know, for one person, a black hole is extraordinary. For another, you know, it's just a consequence of Einstein's theory of gravity. You know, it's nothing extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, the same about the type of dark matter, the, anything. So we should leave the extraordinary part of that sentence. Just keep evidence, okay? So let's be guided by evidence. And even, even if we have extraordinary claims, you know, let's not dismiss them because the evidence is not extraordinary enough. Because if we have an image of something and it looks really strange and we say, oh, the image is not sufficiently sharp, therefore we should not even pay attention to this image or not mm -hmm. even consider. I think that's a mistake. Yes. What we should do is say, look, there is some evidence for something unusual. Let's try and build instruments that will give us a better image. Uh, and if you just dismiss extraordinary claims because the, you consider them extraordinary, you avoid discovering things that you haven't expected. And so I believe that along the history of astronomy, there are many missed opportunities. And I speak about astronomy, but I'm sure in other fields, it's also true. I mean, this is my expertise. For example, you know, the Astrophysical Journal, which is the main primary publication in, in astrophysics. Uh, if you go, you go beyond, be, before the 1980s, there are images that were posted in the Astrophysical Journal of giant arcs, you know, arcs of light surrounding clusters of galaxies. And, you know, you can find it in, printed versions of the Astrophysical Journal, people just ignore, they put the image, they see the arc, they say, oh, I mean, who knows what it is, and just ignore it. And then in the 1980s, the subject of gravitational lensing became popular. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea is that you can deflect light by the force of gravity. And uh, then you can put a source behind the cluster of galaxies, and then you will get these arcs. And actually, Einstein predicted it. Uh, in 1940. And, you know, so these things were expected, but it, people just had them in the images, didn't pay attention. So I'm sure there are lost opportunities sometimes. You, even in existing data, you have things that are unusual and, and exceptional and are not being addressed. 